So Thor got me hooked on puzzles. Well, not in the traditional sense. If you know Pirate Software, you know that he loves solving really tough, intricate puzzles in or out of gaming. And at DEF CON, we went a little crazy on the puzzles. But there was one in particular, the music box puzzle, that I somehow ended up being the only one to solve. But believe me, getting there drove me to madness. I cannot believe I figured it out. But more importantly, I can't believe I survived figuring it out because this, this puzzle took me four days of nonstop thinking. And I just, I have to get this out of me because it's just rotting in my brain now. And if I don't, then it will sit there forever. So now all of you have to suffer with me. So what puzzles are we talking about? If you're not familiar with DEF CON, it's the Hacker Conference. One of the coolest details of DEF CON is that they have contests, a lot of contests, and anybody can propose a new contest idea. One of the coolest contests at DEF CON is hosted by a group of people called the Crypto Village. And this year they hosted their gold bug puzzle. It's a puzzle that is actually a bunch of different puzzles. They do it almost every year and they are incredibly difficult and so much fun. If we scroll, you can see they have the puzzles from every other year they've done this before. Thor and his team have won pretty much all of them because they are good at puzzles. But this year was really hard. They're always difficult, obviously, but this one was chaotic and it was particularly chaotic for me and my crew to do for the first time. He was willing to include newbies like myself, my CTO Mark, and Luke Lafreni from Linus Tech Tips who came out and hung with us. And I was scared I would be dead weight. I somehow wasn't. So <laughs> this year's gold bug was tough. It was 13 core puzzles and then a 14th meta puzzle. These puzzles are all very, very different but have some amount of overlap. And the way it worked was they all came out right when DEF CON started. And at noon on the final day, Sunday, whoever had solved the most of them, whichever team had the most solves, won. And Pirate Software's team that I happened to be lucky enough to be on was the one that won. And we had solved all of these puzzles except for the meta puzzle and music box number 12. To give you an idea of what these puzzles are like, I'm going to start with a different one. But before I do that, massive spoiler alert. These are really fun puzzles. And if you want to go solve them yourself, you can still now. The link will be in the description if you want to give these puzzles a shot, even if you just want to do it as like prep for next year or just for fun, because it's like fun. So yeah, they're great puzzles, but doing this alone after the fact is going to be pretty rough. And I wouldn't wish the chaos that we went through on anybody, but it's also some of the most rewarding things I've ever done. And I think you guys will understand as we go through. So before we go to the puzzle that drove me insane, the music box, I'm going to give a simpler example with charades. Charades puzzle is a PDF. This is the whole puzzle. Shall we play charades? And then it's all of these people with all these random speech bubbles with words in them doing very strange moves. You immediately would think metadata, right? Nope, not in the metadata. There were some challenges where the metadata was helpful, but this was not one of them at all. In fact, I ended up totally tearing this PDF apart in Affinity, just trying to find what might be hidden inside of it. So the solution for this one was multi-part. The first thing that the team discovered that was really helpful is that all the positions these guys are in are part of, I think it was called the Dancing Men, but it's an old like piece of art from way back where somebody drew individual like stick figures and had a letter that each one mapped to. And each of them roughly mapped to a specific letter. But then we had to figure out what to do with the speech bubbles. And at that point, nobody knew what was going on. Nobody understood. <laughs> it was really hard for us to figure out. The first theory people had was that the number of dots in each of these words might matter. And they thought those might have been added in post. So I took it apart in a PDF editor, well, Affinity, and noticed that those dots were not added after the fact. I then thought we should check the font. So I found the font, checked it, and indeed the dots were all still there in the font. So we were pretty lost at that point. Eventually we learned, and this is where the spoilers really start, the answer to all of the puzzles is a 13 character word or phrase. And there were 13 speech bubbles here. And we knew each person represented a letter. So progress was being made, but the dots were not how we knew which one went where. We needed to figure out where each letter went. We got a hint, which was take a close look at the words that are in the speech bubbles, which we already were doing, so we were going mad. But somebody on the team noticed there's a lot of I's, X's, and V's, Roman numerals. So Penguin has the one I, so that's number one. Existing, XII, that's 12. Vintage, VI, that's six. Ravishing, VII, that's seven. Hairpin, two I's, that's two. I made this image 
where I labeled each of the numbers and all of the letters each person represented. One is R, two is A, three is I, four is L, rail, five is C, six is R, seven is A again, eight is M. So it's rail, cram, I'm trying to remember what it actually was. No, because this ended up being S is what I think we figured out. It's not an M, it's an S. It was rail, crash, 10, H-E, 12 was rail, crash, H-E-R. Yeah, rail, crash, hero is what it ended up being. And you could find that by going through all here. And we had to figure out M was actually meant to be an S. But that was the solution to this one. This ended up being one of the easier ones. <laughs> I wanted to show this as an example of how these puzzles work and how you solve them. Because then when I show you the one that I had to solve, I think you'll be a little more sympathetic of my pain. This is the digital music box puzzle. This was, this was challenging. Huge shout out to the person who made this puzzle for a handful of reasons. First, it's incredibly creative. It's really cool. On top of that, they were really responsive because I didn't solve this before the deadline. I actually solved this like eight or nine hours after the deadline, sitting in the airport lounge, desperate to get this puzzle out of my head. The important piece here is this link below to this music score. Musa Somno Privator. It also has this nine line nonsense dump at the top that we had to like figure out what to do with. And the actual music here, as someone who knows music notation very well, <sighs> nonsense. So immediately I started digging in. I grabbed all the source for this. And if I open up VS Code, and there's a couple things I noticed in here. The first thing I noticed is that the notes listed here includes G5. But if we look here, G5 is not included. There's a note missing in this row. I assumed this had to be a bug, and it was. However, I was told by the team that made it that the bug didn't matter. The comments were already there. They don't obfuscate anything. If you go to the source, you can always see it. All this is there, not minified or anything. They just give it to you. They don't care. They don't want us looking for things where there aren't any. And if you were to spend your time de-obfuscating JS, would not be worth it. So they just don't really hide things. But this was sus to me. Like This letter should not have been here if this was here too, because this guarantees only the first nine or the first 10 render, even though there's 11, and that broke. So we're already getting a little confused here. Then we got a hint. The hint was take note of where the beat lands. And the word note had a capital N. If you, like me, are a fellow music nerd, you know that 4-4 four, four means the beat is not everything here. So in this first one, the beat would be this note, this A. Then we have a rest. It's an eighth rest, so that this would be off beat and nothing. Then we have this F, which would be on beat, then a rest. Then we have this E flat. Then we have this A, but this A wouldn't be on beat because it's one, two, three, four. And there's a gap between each one when you're playing eighth notes because there's eight notes when you're playing eighths. But this is 4-4, four, four, which means only the first, third, fifth, and seventh would be on beat. So this would be A, F, E flat, nothing, if we were to do it on beat. So this was the assumption I ran with for most of this challenge. And if I find the notated version of the PDF that we made, we went through and labeled all of the notes accordingly. So it'd be easier to quickly throw them into the music box. But we still had to figure out what the text on top meant, because we had this blob here. And there's a couple notable things in here. The one that stood out to me the most is the way that the text was wrapped. Why is this line so much longer than the others? Why is the structuring of it as strange as it is? This is not a thing that like justify or centering can do. So we had no idea where to go from here. I spent a lot of time thinking about the way this was laid out, trying to figure out why did the line length matter for each line? I counted the characters. I counted the words. I counted the syllables. I was trying to figure out the importance of each line, line here, and it drove me mad. Remember earlier where I said the puzzles all had 13 letters? I did find a 13 here. One line. The text was nine lines, so there's 10. Then 11, 12, 13 for the music. I was like, oh my god, I figured it out. There's 13 lines of information here. And we need 13 letters. That must be it. So I went through. This would have been C for three words. This would have been, uh, this was nine. What? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So that would have been C, I. Forgot how many words this was, but it didn't spell a word. So I was starting to go mad. I thought I had found one of our magic 13s, and I hadn't. I had plotted this music so many times. So many times. This is what I thought 
one of the correct notations was. If we open these side by side, we have the A, we have the F, we have the E flat, we have nothing. We have nothing again for this rest because this E's off beat. Nothing again because there's another rest. Then we have the B flat there. Then we have two more rests. Then we have this pile here. And I kept notating and I kept going, but a really annoying thing happened. See this G right here? This would be a G5, which doesn't fit on the notation. Also, for those who don't know music notation, it's the thing I should specify. Since this was um, A4 to G5, that meant that was from this A here up to this line there. So the only notes that matter are from here to this bar at the top. Anything above or below doesn't matter because it doesn't fit in this notation. So the G here, even though it was on beat, and quote from the people who made the puzzle, the bug shouldn't matter. The fact that I couldn't write this G in here drove me insane. Because from everything I understood, which is we're notating what's on the beat and the bug doesn't matter, this G not fitting did not work in my brain. It did not compute. But we did have this now. We had this image of what I thought was the correct beat grid and the correct note grid. And we're trying to figure out what to do with this. The initial plan, which ended up being largely correct, is that we had to somehow apply this on top of the text to figure out the right characters. There's a couple catches. The big one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 20 holes in here. We only need 13 letters. So that was wrong. <laughs> we tried a lot of things with that, though. It's a bit hard to see because I was just quickly setting it up. But I set up my affinity, which is my graphics editor of choice, so that I could overlap and overlay the words with the grid. I'll actually show how this worked because I think it's interesting. I wrote a quick script to chunk the words. So I have the, the nine lines here, and I would chunk them so that they would fit better. So here it is with no spaces. So I would screenshot this, I would hop over to Affinity, I would paste this, I would go back and grab my screenshot, which I have here. I'll take a new one, that's just the part I need. Grab that, paste it over. I set this to opacity 20. And then I would resize it so the letters would fit perfectly. Perfect. And then do that. So each letter has full coverage. I need to make it slightly taller usually to balance out there. And as you can see from here, the revealed letters are clear, but they're also nonsense. There's M, P, a bunch of blanks, D, A, K, V, S, nothing. So maybe the title is something I should ignore. Okay, shift it down. Now we have a row that's not being read at all, but we also still have nonsense. <laughs> I tried so much different shit with this. You have no idea. I was going mad trying to figure out how this would work. I tried different versions where I would chunk it every eight and I went down and God, the way I did this one was insane. I just want to show you guys what I did. I wish I saved it because I felt like I was going mad. I took this, I took the overlay and for the first eight rows, I would set it up like that. And for the next eight, I would shift it eight over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to go one more over and do that. Just looking for a pattern in the letters. I couldn't figure out anything from here. I was going insane. This was all over the course of like two and a half, three days. Thankfully, the gold bug team saw that nobody had solved this puzzle yet. So they gave us more hints. Here was them saying the bugs didn't matter. But the more important part was consider the attachment and take note of where the beats land. Remember to hold them for the full count. By the way, this text, remember to hold them for the full count. Remember that because it's going to bite us really hard soon. This one threw me even harder. There is no basis for getting into treble with the music box. No basis means don't use the bass clef. I already knew that because it was within the A through G. No basis for getting into treble means we have to use treble with the music box. I knew that. We shall put some food on the grill and may feel better after you've rested and eaten. So I looked up grill, or so somebody else on the team, I think it was actually Thor, realized immediately that grill meant grill cipher, which is we have a bunch of characters and then we have a thing with holes, the, the grill that you lay on top and then you can see which letters actually matter. We were already theorizing this, but it was nice to have confirmation that was the absolute right way to do it. But there were still things in here I didn't get, specifically rested and eaten. I was already resting, but I thought that maybe we should ignore the rest because the title of the song, Musa Somno Priver, was like the muse rests 
or the muse never sleeps or something. It's like, oh, should I skip the rests? So I read the cipher, but I squashed all the rests out. So it was like flatter, nothing. I was going insane at this point. The timer was about to buzz, but we got one more hint right before it. Musicians are not perfect. It seems the G in the second measure should have been in G flat. Oh my God, that's the G note that I've been worried about this whole time. This G right here that doesn't fit because it's like on the beat, but it's too high up. This should have been a G flat. So I fixed that, ran all the ciphers again, nothing. I was beside myself. I had put so much effort in. I had even built a custom version of the site so that I could have red grid markers for every eight. So I would know where I was as I was notating because it made it easier to do. Ugh. Craziness. But as I was hitting up the team asking for help, because I asked them in their Discord, hey, I know that the puzzles are already done. Is it okay if I ask questions here, though? Because I, I won't be able to sleep if I don't solve Music Box. And they were super down, which is awesome. A huge shout out to the team again. These things are so cool. And even though there was a couple small mistakes in this one, the puzzle was genius. And I loved doing it, even if I almost went insane. As I was writing up the issues I was having in their Discord, I was going through each of the hints. And I realized it specifies G in the second measure. Somehow my brain had just auto-completed a second line because this G had been stressing me out for so long. This particular G note was driving me mad. Oh, one more thing driving me insane. There's 32 columns in that beat grid. The 32nd beat is here. So 28 through 32 is here. The rest is 33 onward, so it doesn't fit horizontally, which doesn't matter because all of these notes are too low, except for this A. So this A didn't fit horizontally and this G didn't fit vertically. And both of those were driving me crazy. But then I realized that the second measure G is this G. This G should have been a G flat, but this G's off beat. It shouldn't matter. Wait, do the beats even matter? Should I just be notating this in eighths instead of fourths? So I redid the beat grid again. I went through and placed all of the notes, including the rests. So if I do that again here quick, just to show what I mean, there's A, then A, then rest, then F, then rest, then E flat, then A, then rest, whole rest, eighth rest, E, a quarter rest, B flat, E flat, quarter rest, and then the note that I was screwing up the whole time, this G flat. But also I was going half as wide because I was doing every quarter, not every eighth. Anyways, I got the new grid, I applied it to the text, and it still didn't fucking work. Actually, I'm going to notate a little more because there's an important part here. Cool. So we have the quarter rest here. We have the A, C, E flat. Then we have the B flat. Then two quarter rests. Then we have two eighth rests, which adds to a quarter rest. Then we have this D note. So I put the D note. Remember, we have to hold them for the full count. So it's not just the one D. We actually have to hold it for all four. And then we're at the end of this, and that first line, the four measures, perfectly fits in here. Oh my god, we're figuring it out. Progress. So I screenshotted that. I hopped over to Affinity. Whip, teku, use, uh, nope. This clearly isn't it. Also, the number of letters is wrong. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's off by 3. But if I shift it up... And we also pretend that the title isn't part of it because the title shouldn't have been part of it. That was just a crazy theory I had. So ignore that bit. But now we can trim those three letters and what's left is 13. And it starts with die, ting, dieting, seniso, or senino, progress. That's, this seems like it's going to be it. Oh my God, there's actually a word coming out of this for the first time. Dieting. I really thought I was onto it here and that there might have just been like some mistake in my notation or something. So I shared that with the puzzle creator. Is it dieting Sanino? Nope. <sighs> I was going mad. So I asked the puzzle creator one last question. Does it matter how we lay the text out? Specifically, I asked, should we be trimming the space and the punctuation? But also we had started doing wrapped versions. I showed you the wrap with eight. I also wrapped with 32 because it's 32 notes long and it didn't fit with this one either. But then I wrapped it with the grammar included. So the spaces and the commas are here, but it wraps every 32 characters. God bless JavaScript for making it so easy to quickly do this. Oh, so this is for me making a thumbnail earlier. Ignore that. But uh, I was able to quickly split this and generate different grammar chunked bits. So I grabbed this one. 
Whitby Intense but Ire. Still nothing. But when I did this one, my roommate CTO and good friend Mark noticed something that I didn't see. To, to be fair, I was sleep deprived and going insane. He noticed if we only took the I here, it was Whitby Inspire. I was like, there's no way that's it. We were specifically told to hold the note. Why would we just drop all the letters after the first one? But I submitted the answer quick just because I was curious and went back to solving. I then command tabbed back to Discord and we had the answer. It was correct. We actually solved it. And we solved it because Mark noticed inspire was the second word here. Turns out the hint they had given us about holding the note for the full count. I don't want to say it was wrong or a lie because I think I know what the intent was. I think the intent was to make sure you played the note and then left the blanks after correctly. Most of their hints seemed to be assisting people who didn't know music notation in writing it down in the grid correctly. But I know music notation. I know how to put things in the grid correctly. My assumption was that this meant we had to hold it for the full count, as in put the note four times. Remember I said there were 16 notes? If we trim these three, now there's 13 notes. Now it fits perfectly. And now we get an answer. <laughs> After all this chaotic time, after somebody else in the team wrote a script that had binary encoding of the notes so they could spit out all the potential answers, after all the chaos, my little graphics hacking, my long note, and then Mark noticing the word inspire at the bottom here, that all came together for us to finally get the answer and to be the only team out of 400 who entered the contest to solve this particular problem. And that's how I did it. I still can't believe I'm the only one who solved this puzzle. It was insane. And I hope this video helped showcase just how insane it was. Huge shout out to the Crypto Village and Goldbug for putting this on. It was a blast. And those small bugs were minuscule. And if they weren't there, this would have been without question the puzzle people liked the most. I loved this. It was so cool. And thank you all so much for doing it, having us and letting us partake in this awesome set of puzzles. I'll certainly be there next year. And I hope this video inspires some of you guys to partake as well. Until next time. Peace nerds.